What's up? In today's video, I'm going to show you my method for creating vintage big head style graphics. These were really popular in the 90s, but I still see them pop up all the time. In fact, I just used these same techniques to design for a pretty famous rapper. Without revealing who that was, let's just say he likes his mom's spaghetti. Enough talk, let's get into it. So here's the design we're gonna be recreating in this video, Giannis Antetokounmpo. It is All-Star Weekend. I'm from Wisconsin, so this definitely feels appropriate. Let's jump right into it. I usually start with images first, but we're actually gonna start with text today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab this T over here on the left, that is the horizontal type tool. We're gonna to click into our canvas over here on the right, and I'm gonna type out Giannis. Okay, then I'm gonna grab the arrow uh, move tool over here in the top left corner. I'm going to click show transform controls right here at the top so that I can kind of see a box around the text and then holding down the shift key. I'm going to drag it up so that it maintains the aspect ratio that we want. Cool. Okay, Giannis. So the next step is going to be uh, actually adding in this gradient that you see over here on the left. Next, I'll grab the eyedropper tool so that I can pick out this green color from the left side. I've already got white as my other color here in the background and the gradient is gonna go from green to white. So I'm going to double click into this Giannis text and then click gradient overlay. From this gradient box, I'm going to go to basics and the very first option is gonna be our foreground and background color. So we're good there. From here, I'm gonna add two strokes of black and white. So we'll click stroke right here. We'll change the position to outside and I'll change the color to white. And I wanna say I did like 15 pixels. So we'll try that and then we'll click the plus icon here next to stroke. And then on the bottom layer, we'll change the color to black and then we'll change the size to 30. I just like to double it. It's just easy for, for math's sake. Um, I think that's exactly what I did, so cool. And I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna actually double check the gradient to make sure it's 100, yep, okay. I just wanted to make sure this wasn't like set to 150 or 50 or anything like that. Want it to be at 100, nice uh, seamless gradient going from dark to light. And then I'm going to adjust sort of the, the arc of this text, right? So the easiest way to do that is to, again, select the horizontal type tool, and then at the very top, you'll see um, create warped text, right? So it's this T with a little like curved line under it. I'm gonna click that. And then from this warp text box, I'm gonna select arc lower. And then I'm gonna change the bend to like negative, probably 20, maybe 30. Let's, let's start with 20 first, we can always increase it. And then I'm gonna grab the move tool again and just sort of drag it down. But this time I'm not holding the shift key because we don't wanna maintain that aspect ratio, right? So I'm just gonna to try to eyeball it here and get it to a place where it's close to how it is on the left. So that looks good to me. I'm actually gonna go in and double click this text again, and then I'm gonna bring up this gradient a bit more. And I know I just said that I want it to be 100, but it's so funny. I must have done this the first time too. I forgot, I sort of like changed the scale of this gradient. So we're actually gonna bring it down a bit just so that we get a healthy amount of that green in the text. And it's just sort of like gradually fading at the top to white, but we don't want it, to, we don't, we wanna make sure we see plenty of that green color because it is like the primary focus um, of this design, right? In terms of the color palette. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is play with the space between these letters. I think right now it's set to, let's take a look. It's set to zero, which is cool, but I think I want a little bit more space between them. So I'm just gonna change that to 25. And I think that's just gonna help with the overall look of the text and have you know the letters not necessarily like bleeding into one another. That way you have like a nice separation here between the A and the N um, and some of the other letters, right? So now let's duplicate this layer so that we can create uh, the shadow layer that you see right here, right? That nice little drop shadow. So I'll hit Command J on this text, and then we'll go down to the bottom layer, double click into that, and we'll just change this, this stroke to black. This stroke is already black, and then we'll change it to a color overlay of black as well. Make sure it's fully 000 black. Cool, click OK. 
And then I'm just gonna use the arrow key and then hold down shift and just like bump it over to a place where I think it looks good. Just like a nice little like clean, super clean drop shadow there. So that looks good. I'm gonna bump both of these up a little bit. Cool. Okay, so since we're already using this font, and by the way, the font is uh, Gaudi Heavy Face. Gaudi, right? I'm, I'm gonna assume that's the way to pronounce it. Um, Gaudi Heavy Face, it's a classic. You know, you'd see this in probably the 1960s, you know, all the way through the 70s and 80s. Um, and it's a retro font, right? So that's why I specifically picked that font to use, has that vintage retro feel. So now I'm going to duplicate this top text once again and just drag it down here. And you could do this one of two ways. If you wanted to just save this layer style and then you know apply it to whatever text you type out, you could do that. But I think this is gonna work actually better. I'm gonna change the, the warp text back to none and then click OK. And then I'm just gonna size this down. And again, I'm, I'm not holding down the shift key and that'll allow me to just like kind of play with this text. So we've got Anta de Kumpo written out. I'm just gonna scale this down and I'm gonna look at the top text and sort of use these guides. And if you don't see these, these purple lines that are showing up, just go to view, show, smart guides and make sure that's turned on that's going to allow you to basically align the text or whatever element that you're moving or resizing and you'll be able to align it with other um, uh, layers in your in your canvas now let's look at that gradient how do we feel about that i feel like there's a little bit too much white at the top and so i'm going to double click into that layer and i'm just going to bring up this gradient a bit more so it's more of almost more of like a light green at the top versus white i just think that looks better and so now we're going to do the same thing that we did at the top uh, to create that that drop shadow right so i'll just duplicate this text out then i'll double click into it do a color overlay of black change this stroke to black so that essentially what we're looking at is just an entirely black piece of text right but it has the strokes in there so it's the exact same uh, size and shape as the text on top so we'll go to this bottom layer and then same thing just sort of bump it over using arrow keys holding down shift bump it over just eyeballing it and then just to make sure it's still aligned i'm just gonna highlight both of those text layers and just drag this over and make sure that we're still like lined up with this newly added drop shadow so the main text is done now let's add in these other um, sort of accent um, pieces of text right so the top says the Greek freak that is his nickname and we're gonna use brush script for that so I'll just type in brush over here brush script pretty classic I'll just type out and we're gonna size this up in a second Greek freak and then I'm just going to drag this up I'm gonna hold down the uh, the shift key here and just size it up. Cool, I wanna make sure with script fonts, I always, like literally 99.9% .9 of the time, I have um, the kerning set to zero or the tracking set to zero. We're going to curve this a little bit. So again, click into that T over here on the left, go to the warp text at the top, and then I'm gonna change it to arch and then just the tiniest bit of arch, nothing crazy, yeah, like 10 maybe even less, go maybe eight. Let's see how that looks and just arrow key it down. I just noticed this, it has a little white stroke on it. So we'll add that and probably 15 as well. Change it to white, bump it down. Now the bottom text here, NBA champion, all his accolades. We're going to click the horizontal type tool. I'm gonna change the uh, color palette back to default, which is this little black and white uh, swatches right here. You can see, click that. I'll click into the canvas and this is just straight up uh, Arial. So it's Arial, it's actually Arial Narrow. Um, old, I believe, okay. So I'm just going to increase the size of this so we can see what we're doing a bit better. I'll type out NBA champion and then hold down the option key, click eight, and that will give you the little bullet. NBA finals, MVP, another bullet, 2X, NBA M M 
SVP. Okay, and we'll just move this down here and I'm going to size it down a bit, holding down the shift key to do that. And I'll just try to center it up with this text as much as I can. Let's just keep working with the other elements and we'll save the, um, the photos and, and everything like that for last sort of as like the final touch on this. So I have a confession to make about these stars. It is something I've gate kept for years and years. Um, <laughs> at some point in my design career, I, I stopped using stars as, the sh as a shape and I just found a font that is stars and I've used it ever since. I have no idea if it's making my life easier or harder, but it seems pretty easy. It's honestly just so natural that it's what I do. So I'll show you, uh, I'll click into here and it is a font called Seeing Stars. And so if I just uh, use the letter W, it's just a black star, like it's perfect. That's what I use for stars. And then I'll usually just, I'll either create it as a smart object so I can move it around or I'll just keep it as the text. So let's click into this star and we'll do a color overlay of this green, we'll grab that. And then we're going to apply the same strokes except for we're gonna do it a little bit different because we're going to change the top one to black and the bottom one to white. And then we're actually gonna change the positions to inside for both of them, okay? So that's gonna allow us to, to have um, sort of a, a sharper feel in terms of the strokes um, uh, with this star. So I think that just overall looks better than using outside. So we're good there and I can just kind of move these around and place them as needed to match the left side. So we got a little star here, a smaller one. So I'm just hitting um, command uh, J to duplicate these out since they're literally exactly the same then I'm holding down the shift key to, to size it down and of course anytime I say uh, Command it's control for PC users. There's no real rhyme or reason um, As to why I'm placing the stars <laughs> where I'm placing them. I'm just looking at this and saying This looks like a good place for a star. Let's add one there same thing with sizing, you know, I think the biggest thing is just not making them all the same size because um, that's just gonna look redundant and boring. But I, I like to keep some of them the exact same size because that I think lends itself to just creating a more cohesive uh, look overall and it gives it a little bit more balance as well. I'm sure this one will move once we get this image in here, but I'll just place it right here so we have it. So we have the text down, we've got the stars down, we gotta throw in this Bucks logo, we gotta throw in the, the glow, sort of the green glow and the NBA logo. I just searched NBA logo PNG. We'll just drag this into Photoshop and Command A, grab this whole canvas, Command C to copy and then Command V to paste it in. So I'll grab the magic wand tool. I'm gonna check anti-alias at the top and tolerance is set to 12 and then I'll grab the blue I'll grab the red and then I'll just hit Command J and that will throw them to the top. We'll get rid of this bottom layer and then I'll just do a color overlay of black on this NBA logo. Click OK, right click and convert to smart object. And that's gonna allow us to just size this down without losing a ton of resolution. And I'll just sort of eyeball it here to be the size it is on the left bump it over using the arrows holding down shift so the next thing is going to be this bucks logo in the background so we'll go back to the internet and i searched bucks logo png literally the first um result that came up and it's from Wik wikipedia which is generally speaking like pretty good as a resource for grabbing logos. They're usually pretty high resolution. So I'll just drag this into uh, Photoshop. And as you can see, it's got the transparent background, which is great. Command A will grab this whole thing. Command C to copy back into our canvas and Command V to paste it in. And then with this, I got rid of the tan for white just so it was like, it didn't seem out of the ordinary in terms of like the color palette. You see a little bit of that cream in his jersey, but it just, to me, it didn't feel like it was enough to like use it for this logo. So I grabbed the eyedropper tool and again, anti-alias is checked at the top. And then I just clicked into this uh, tan color, hit command J and that threw that color to the top. 
and then just double click that layer and change the color overlay to white. So then now we've just got this fully white and green uh, logo, right? Now, speaking of green, I have to do the same thing because this value of green is different than what we're using. So we're gonna go back to the logo, click the green and do the same thing. Command J, throw it to the top, double click, and then this time we'll select this green color. So then we'll grab all of these layers from this logo, hold down the shift key and select all of them. Right click, merge layers. And I'm not gonna convert to a smart object or anything because I'm not gonna be changing the size of this at all. I'm just going to position it here, sort of in the middle of the canvas. So next we gotta get this glow in the background. There's probably a lot of ways that you could achieve this glow. This is the way that I do it. I'll just click the brush tool and then I will literally just like change the foreground to this green color and I'll just make a, a hard dot with the circle brush. So like you could use the ellipse tool if you want to do that. You could use a brush, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got like a solid dot, you're good. And then I will just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'll just like blur this up a ton. So I think this is exactly what I used. 91.3 pixel radius, sure. All right, so you can do whatever. As long as it's like blurry like that, you're good. Click okay. And then I will just click show transform controls at the top here, uh, grab the move tool, and then I'll just like size it up. So it's just like a nice like natural blur. I think there are ways to get rid of, of the banding that can happen sometimes with these types of blurs. Um, I think that I saw a YouTube video about it the other day, but I didn't watch it, sorry. So if you're annoyed by like any banding that happens when you do this, and banding means like you see lines sort of going, uh, sort of like tree rings almost. Um, if you see that, just uh, look up a video of how to fix it because I'm good with it. So the first thing you might notice is that it's a lot lighter over here on the right side than on the left. I just duplicate out this glow like a few times. So right here, I'll just change this to glow and then I'll just duplicate out this layer like one, two, yeah, maybe that's it. So three, there's a total of three glow layers. And then I'll just right click with all of them highlighted and merge them together. So now we've just got this nice glow that we can use and we can move around. And it is important that um, I'll click show transform controls at the top so you can see this. This doesn't go outside of the canvas. So all of the pixels are still within the canvas and you can see that because the box is still within the canvas, right? So that's pretty important. If you had the glow going outside of the canvas, it would probably cut off and it would look like boxy and it wouldn't look natural. So we've got the glow, we've got everything except for these photos. Before we move on, I have to tell you about the GFX World online community. Our members range from t-shirt designers to clothing brand owners, print shops, everyone from seasoned pros to beginners just getting started. That means you can ask questions and get feedback or advice from industry professionals. You've got a couple options depending on how serious you wanna take this. You can join the premium community, which gives you access to to exclusive tutorials and design tools, the raw Photoshop design files from all of my new tutorials, as well as weekly calls with me and other designers where you can ask questions and get feedback directly. In the free community, you'll be able to interact with others and get access to a rotating list of freebies. There you'll also find my 101 course on the basics of t-shirt design in Photoshop. I hope I see you there. Now back to the tutorial. So this is the fun part. We're gonna jump back out to the internet. We're gonna grab the photos we used here. Let's start with this one. Right click, copy image, jump back to our canvas. And I'm going to, let's see, probably go to the top layer. Okay. And I'm just going to make these a little bit smaller here so we can see more of these layers. Basically you click the arrow right here and it will, um, it will expand or collapse um, the, the effects that you see, right? So just like this. So I'm going to command V to get that photo in here. And you know what I'm seeing now, which is kind of bad on his Jersey, it's flipped because I flipped the photo. So I think I'm actually going to get rid of all the lettering on his Jersey just so we can avoid that. Let's just get the, uh, the image cut out first, right? So I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. 
And then I'm gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm just gonna grab all of this and hit Command J and then just delete this part. So we're just working with this. So let's get this cut out. And I actually think I might have to uh, hide these other layers for a minute because we're gonna use generative fill and I don't want generative fill to use other parts of this image. I'm gonna highlight all these and then hit Command G just so we can quickly group everything together. Okay, so now we're just working with this photo and the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the background. So we've still got Damien in here, it's all good. We've got this layer mask and we can just basically paint out this section of the photo. Um, and so I'm going to make sure the foreground is set to black. I've got my brush picked out here and I'm just going to paint out Damien here. Sorry, bro. The rest of the image cutout is pretty clean. So I'm just gonna right click, uh, convert to smart object, grab the lasso tool over here on the left. And then I'm just gonna lasso part of his arm to there. So it's like the kind of the general shape of where his elbow and forearm would be. And then I'll just click generative fill and leave it blank. I'll just click generate. If you don't see this, uh, this task bar right here, you can go to window contextual taskbar and I'll just click generate. And in theory, it should just fill in his forearm uh, to his elbow and um, you know, should look natural, but you never know with generative fill for all I know, it's gonna, yeah. <laughs> what the, look at that. Wow, dude, that is so gnarly. Why would it ever do, dude, that is, uh, that is low key like disgusting. Why would it do that? That's wild. Okay, dude, I'm gonna generate one more time and see what it does. But if it gives like crazy results like this, I might like, I don't know. I might like sprinkle some holy water on my computer. Okay. All right, there we go. So definitely some better results here. Like that looks a little bit Popeye-ish. That looks the most natural. We'll probably do that here. It threw a little watch on Giannis. Why not? All right. So I'm good with this. We're gonna keep this. I'm going to highlight both of these layers. I'll close this properties box. I'm gonna highlight both of these layers, right click, convert to smart object. The next step is gonna be um, making his uh, head really big, right? So I'm gonna grab the lasso tool. And with this, you can be as precise as you want. I'm pretty good with the lasso tool, so I can usually make like, just like a good enough shape naturally, but you could use, you know, whatever tool you need to, to get this done. So you, you want to make sure that it's like rounded though. You don't want to get, you don't want to like go down and like get his neck too, cause that's going to take away from the effect. So once you've got the head selected, I'll make sure this layer is highlighted and hit command J and that's going to throw just the head to its own layer. At the top, I'll change the, um, the rulers to percent so I can see exactly like, and you can definitely just eyeball this. This is like just my preference. Then I'll size it up and make sure it's at least like between 180 to 200%. So let's say like 180, sure 186. In theory, like you could use whatever body you wanted to. Like I don't need to use this picture of Giannis. I, I like that um, he's got his elbow up. So it's like a good pose, but you could use like, I could put this head with like this body. That's the kind of cool thing about this um, style, but I'll just like bump it up. So it looks, you know, cartoonish. I'm going to zoom in here and just like fix his, this area right here using the lasso tool, just so it's a little bit smoother. I think I actually want his head to be even bigger than this. Here's my thought on these big head, like style um, designs you have to make sure that like it's an extraordinary amount of contrast between the body and the big head. Otherwise, if it's like too close, some people might look at it and not even notice that their head is much larger than their body. Um, so I always try to make an attempt to like make it like comically large, right? From here, I'm going to highlight both of these layers, right click, and I'll just merge them together, okay? So now I'm going to bring back all these other layers, size this down, and then you can see right here, this. so this is where the generative fill happened. If I just remove the background, that should get rid of that. Cool. And then I'm going to flip this. So to flip it, I have a show transform 
controls uh, checked here at the top and then I'll just right click and then I'll just go to flip horizontal. I'll bring it down, size it way up. Okay, so the next thing is we are going to get rid of the lettering on this jersey because like I said, now that it's backwards, it just looks super weird. So I'm gonna lasso around it and then I'm gonna just do generative fill and it should just leave us with a blank jersey. So let's get rid of the Nike logo as well and the Motorola logo, sorry. Shout out to Nike and Motorola, but I gotta do what I gotta do. I just realized I forgot this signature. I found this uh, autographed photo of Giannis, right click, copy image, back to our top layer, command V, we'll paste it in, and then I'm just gonna grab the lasso tool and just like lasso around this autograph, command J, pop that out, get rid of the photo, and then just size this up, move it down here, and then I'll just use um, image adjustments threshold and I'll just threshold this logo or this uh, autograph rather. If you want it to be smoother, it's probably gonna be like decently smooth. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, you could always blur it out and do like brightness contrast, but I don't think that's necessary here. So then I'm just gonna get rid of this white by going to um, the magic wand tool over here on the left. I'll click anti-alias and not contiguous and then I'll just click the black in this autograph, command J, throw it to the top, get rid of the other layer, and then I'll just do a color overlay on this for good measure. And then I'll move it down here. And I think I actually picked a different autograph, uh, a different photo for the autograph, which is fine, because you can see that there's some variation. The tail is a lot uh, larger on this one, but that's, totally fine it's definitely still his autograph so let's talk about this photo so the way that I created this sort of cartoonish painterly effect is through a series of different effects that I actually made into a Photoshop action now I'm gonna make this action available to anyone who's part of the GFX world premium community so just another reason that you should definitely join this community if you are serious about design specifically uh, you know t-shirt design it's uh, a group of like-minded individuals other designers whether they're clothing brand owners print shop owners uh, just general t-shirt design enthusiasts you're gonna find them over there as well as exclusive courses tutorials and design tools like this one so i highly recommend joining the gfx world premium community and that will be linked in the description and once again you will get this action uh, for free just for being part of this uh this community so let's get into this effect essentially to use it all you have to do is highlight the photo that you want to use now i highly highly recommend that you create a clean cutout first um, you don't want there to be like, you know, a bunch of the background still in here. You don't want the, the edges to be super rough or anything like that. That's just going to take away from this effect. But all you have to do is highlight the layer that you want to use it on and then highlight the effect right here, cartoonish action, and then just click play. It's going to do its thing. Obviously, you know, the more powerful your computer and your setup is, the faster it's going to go. There are a lot of different effects involved, so it might take you know, maybe up to a minute or so, um, again, depending on your processing power, but it's already going to work right here. And it's going to leave us with uh, not only the effect, but this uh, levels adjustment layer as well, right on top of it. So you'll have your original that you can always go back to right here. It's gonna be hidden, you can click it back on. If you don't like this effect for whatever reason, if you wanna try a different photo, whatever the case may be, you can always go back to that original here. So if you click into the adjustment layer right here, it's gonna bring up this properties box and that's how you know you can blow this out if you really want to by moving this, this middle stopper, you know, toggle to the left, that's gonna blow it, blow it out a lot more. So honestly, depending on the skin color, depending on how you want this to look, you may wanna go more or less, but I did wanna provide that levels adjustment layer in here so that you can adjust as needed, right? From here, you can take it to a whole nother level and make it look even more cartoonish by applying some additional effects. So let me show you how to do that. With your cartoonish or you know photo layer highlighted, you can go to filter, liquify 
and we're gonna play around with this and see what kind of effects we can get. Over here on the right, you'll see Face Aware Liquify. If you click that arrow, it's gonna drop down a bunch of different options. Depending on how many faces you might be using uh, in your layer or in your graphic, you'll see some options right here. It might say face number one, two, three, um, and we're just gonna select the first one right here, face number one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change the eye size. So I'm gonna increase that just like this on all of these. You can also adjust the nose, the mouth. Here's what I did. I increased the smile a bunch, right? So that sort of gave it a more like animated feel. Mouth height, mouth width, you can adjust those if you want. I didn't really, I think, adjust them too much, just a little bit, just to sort of give it that more like animated look. So I went up and again, just eyeballing it on here. I don't wanna to get too crazy. And then on the face shape, I actually decreased the width. So I made it super narrow like that. So that's how it, I, to me, it just looked cooler. It looked better than having this super wide face, it just gave it a different sort of look. And so that's all I did here, click okay. And so now you've got a more like exaggerated look, more cartoonish for sure. Now, one thing that might be super obvious to you and maybe you've you've noticed it by now, these are definitely different photos. And I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not sure what happened if I just like, there must be like a slightly different photo where he's also got his, his, uh, his arm or his elbow on Damien's shoulder and I just grabbed that one by accident. I'm not gonna go through and like redo this whole thing to make sure it's the exact one, uh, but it is different and whatever, that's just how it is. I think this looks great, so I'm gonna keep rolling with it. So from here, I'm gonna group these two uh, layers together. Now, I definitely could have made that part of the action, but I think depending on how you're using, you know, the action itself and how many images you are using, I, I don't think that necessarily putting them in a group is gonna be the most effective thing for you. So in my case, I'm, I only have two photos, so I am just going to throw these into a group. I'll highlight both these layers, Command G, put them in a group. I'll put photo left, and then we're gonna need to move this down. So over on the left, you see his arm sort of going over the text, which adds, you know, definitely some depth to the graphic. But let me show you how to do that. We'll just take this photo left group, and then we'll duplicate it, Command J, and then I'll right click, and I'll just merge the group. So now I've got this photo layer all on its own, and I can move this above the text. I don't know why this black box keeps showing up. I think it's just like a Photoshop glitch. So now we need to clean this area up and get rid of the background. We'll go to Window, Properties, Remove Background. Now, depending on what it looks like, it's gonna be, it's gonna work better or worse for you. That worked pretty good for me. So we've got his arm going over the text. I do see some of his body like sort of peeking through the text over here, which looks weird. It's all cut off. If you wanted to, you could add a gradient to fix that, or like I can just go down here to this cartoonish layer and just use the lasso tool and just like get destructive and just like get rid of all this, right? So I'll just click delete. And so now we've got sort of a clean look there. You can't see his body picking through. You can see it here, which is I think fine. Like that looks good. Maybe I'd get rid of this little area but that should do it. So now let's get this other photo added in here. We'll use the same process as we did here. Back to the internet, we've got our photo, right click, copy image, back to our canvas, command V to paste it in. I feel like the, his body is about the same size as it is over here, so we shouldn't have to resize too much, but we are going to go to window, properties, and just start by removing the background. So right here, Remove background, cool, move that over and adjust it a little bit. I think it's a little bit bigger, so let's just do that now. Size that up. We'll zoom in and we'll make sure that this is clean. So yeah, you can see definitely some parts here are missing. We're gonna clean that up. So I'll make sure that the uh, layer mask thumbnail is highlighted right here. And then I'm just gonna use the lasso tool. I'm sort of like draw in these areas that are pretty clearly missing. I'll make sure that white is selected right here and then I'll go to edit fill. Okay, so that brought, brought back part of his jersey there. Right here in his arm, we're gonna remove this stuff. So we'll clean that up, clean this up. 
Let's see, and it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, in these tutorials, I always go a little bit faster, but we'll just clean up as much as we can. The next thing I'm gonna do is click into this layer mask thumbnail, and then I'm going to increase the feather, and then I'm gonna increase the contrast, and that should smooth out the edges a little bit more. If you wanted to, you could also go to select subject and refine hair and then make sure decontaminate colors is selected. That's if you've got like a ton of details with the hair and you really wanna make sure they're preserved. I'm cool with this because this to me feels more like it might be painted and animated. If it were a cartoon, there probably wouldn't be like a ton of crazy details. So I'm good with this. I'm gonna click okay. And that's a pretty clean cutout. So now I'm going to right click, convert to smart object, and then we'll zoom in a bit more. We're going to cut around his head like this. And I'm just using the lasso tool. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because we'll make more adjustments later. And in order to add more selections like I'm doing right here, just make sure this second box at the top is checked where it says add to selection. Otherwise, if it's not checked, if you try to make another selection, it's gonna remove your original one, right? And we don't want that. So we wanna be able to add more selections. So now we've got his head selected. We'll hit command J and that's gonna throw it to the top. And then I'm just gonna size it up to make it super exaggerated, right? And now I'm just gonna play with the placement a little bit. I want like a good amount of his neck showing because I think that actually lends itself to the cartoony effect too, but not too much where it's like Giannis the giraffe. All right, so that should be good there. Let's see how that looks when we zoom out. Do we want it bigger? I think maybe we make it a little bit bigger. Why not? Let's get super weird. All right, a little bit bigger. Bump it over and down. So I'm gonna merge these two layers together. I've got them both highlighted, merge layers. And then I'm gonna apply this cartoonish action to this photo as well. So now that we've applied these effects to the photo, I'm gonna make a few other adjustments. The first of which is grabbing this levels layer and the cartoonish effect layer, and then moving it above this other photo so that it's overlapping like it is on the left side. Then I'm just gonna bump both of these down a little bit. And then I'm going to jump into the levels by just double clicking here. And I'm going to just sort of lighten it up. Oops, lighten it up like this. So it's a little bit closer in uh, contrast to what we're seeing in the other photo, right? So that should be good. And then I'm gonna adjust the skin tone a bit because it's definitely more yellow on the right side than it is on the left and this is the same person, so the skin tone should be the same. So I'm gonna do this uh, in a couple ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just highlight this layer and then hit Command U, and that's gonna bring up hue and saturation, and then I'll just move this hue to the left, and that's gonna bring it more into like the pink spectrum where this other uh, photo is. So now we've got the skin tones matching, but his jersey is olive versus, you know, forest green, which we're seeing throughout the design. So in order to change that, I think the easiest thing to do is probably going to image adjustments, replace color, and that will allow us to use this eyedropper and select that olive color and just manually change the hue like this. And you could also like change the lightness if you needed to adjust you know the the saturation and make some other adjustments but i'm mostly just looking at the hue to make sure it's more of that like um forest green color so now the jersey better matches you know the rest of the color palette um we've made some adjustments to the skin tones from here honestly it's just making those those other adjustments to the stars so we can move you know these over here move this star over to the left as well. This NBA logo, I kind of actually like how it's sitting um, underneath him now versus on its own. It, I think it does add a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna keep that the way it is. Okay, this star actually needs to go in front of everything. So we can move that over as well. Probably make it a little bit smaller. That, cool bump that over so we'll move this star over as well 
Move it down. Maybe to like there. Cool. Move this bottom text up just a little bit. Let's move this Bucks logo as well in the background so it's a little bit more centered and you have that like focal point of the deer kind of staring straight ahead right down the middle. That looks cool. Okay. So this looks good to me. I mean, if, if we wanted to, um, we could add, you know, a whole like hue and adjustment layer above this whole thing and just like increase it like this. If we wanted to bring back some of that saturation into the design, you know, that's sort of just like, no pun intended, player's choice. If you wanna make more adjustments to hue and saturation, make it brighter, make it more, you know, desaturated, whatever you wanna do. Let's get this mocked up on a t-shirt. We'll see how it looks. I'm just gonna right click on this entire artboard and go to merge group. And then I'll jump into the mockable plugin. If you wanna grab this, it's mockable.com. This is gonna allow me to search through over 4,000 different high res mockups and get what we need to. I love using shock aware mockups, uh, especially this one, the Max Heavyweight Garment Dyed T-shirt. It's a super wide body and just like works really well for especially streetwear, vintage, you know, that sort of vibe. So I'm just gonna re-download uh, this T-shirt right here. You can always take a look at all of them using these eyeballs. Um, if you want more info on this, just go to mockable.com and uh, you can watch the demo video. All right, so we've got our mock-up. I'm gonna hide the quick tutorial, then jump down into fabrics. And I'm gonna start with a cream color. I'll go to textures and we'll jump back into our artboard. I'm gonna hit Command A, grab the whole thing. Command C to copy. Back into our artwork layer, Command V, and we'll paste in that artwork. And I'm just gonna change the blend mode right away to multiply. And then I'm gonna zoom out so we can see this as I convert to a smart object, hold down the shift key and size it down. And let's see how this looks. Come on now. And we could use multiply or I always like to show you that this is an option as well. If you double click into this and then hold down the option key and split this blend if toggle on the right, you can just drag this and that will get rid of the white as well. So whatever, again, player's choice. You can do what you want. I actually like how this looks better. That's fire, that is a clean look. Let's see how it would look on white as well. I mean, I'm guessing it's gonna look pretty good. Yeah, cool. If you wanted to save it, just go to File, Export, Save for Web, and then you can choose PNG or JPEG. Save out this mock-up and you'll be good to go. If you like this video, the only thing that I ask is you take one second, just one second, and hit that subscribe button. It would truly mean everything to me. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.